Hello. You look at me as if you didn't know me. Well, I don't. During what is commonly called the golden age of movies, a 40-year period that began in the late 1920s, there was a strong moral consensus in America, a consensus based primarily upon the teachings of Scripture. I love him, dear Lord. Watch over him tonight. To be sure, many people gave these values little more than lip service. By them we may continue in thy service, O Lord, all the days of our life. Amen. But they nevertheless remain the goal to which our culture collectively aspired. Out of these beliefs came a conviction that the film industry should use its newfound influence over a movie-hungry public to positive ends, seeking to inspire rather than merely titillate. In 1921, the Motion Picture Producers and Distributors of America was formed with the express goal of ensuring the highest possible moral and artistic standards in motion picture production. In 1927, the Hayes Code was established in order to certify, among many other things, that no movie was produced that would lower the moral standards of those who see it. By 1928, President Coolidge, a committed Christian, would call movies one of the greatest forces for good and for civilization, and Warner Brothers would have as its motto, good films, good citizenship. And a few years later, incredible as it may seem today, Christian leaders were invited to come to Hollywood and help supervise film production in order to further ensure the moral propriety of all new releases. So began the Legion of Decency's almost 30-year reign, as well as the creation of many of our best and most enduring films. For many years, the church was the predominant influence in Hollywood. During the golden age of Hollywood, what people look back to fondly when Mr. Smith went to Washington and it was a wonderful life and the bells of St. Mary rang out across the land and the sound of music could be heard and theaters all over the place. It's just a beautiful time. And that beautiful time was because the church was intimately involved in every production. You had the Protestant uh, film office and the Roman Catholic Legion of Decency and they would read the scripts and they would check up on the... Uh, in fact, my friend George Heimrich, who headed up the Protestant film office, he would take a script aside and he would say to him, look, how many empty seats do you want in the theater? If you put in this word, you're going to have people who won't come to see the movie. If you say it this way, you're going to uh, hurt youth. So he would go out and rewrite the scenes. I can't tell you how many scripts would, must have been rewritten by the Protestant film office and by the Roman Catholic Legion of Decency. And Hollywood prospered under that system. But beneath the surface of this golden age, other forces conspired to move the culture in a different direction. Some artists resented the moral constraints of a God they neither knew or understood and sought, through their art, to stretch the moral boundaries of the code. I've come to ask you to make your peace with God. I am at peace with God. My conflict is with man. Have you no remorse for your sin? Who knows what sin is? Born as it was from heaven, from God's fallen angel. Increasingly, their ideas found support in a Hollywood community where the seductions of money, fame, and sex left many people morally confused. Walt won't be back for an hour. Well, then why don't we go in and talk this over? This spiritual decline also opened a wide door to false gods and alternative religions. Eastern mysticism, humanism, New Age thinking, and even the occult steadily chipped away at the industry's Judeo-Christian consensus. Sadly, the rest of America wasn't far behind. Titillation became a way of drawing both controversy and crowds as national morals waned. Mama! The advent of television only exacerbated the situation as Hollywood was forced to compete for an audience that can now stay home and be entertained. And finally, Supreme Court rulings on obscenity, nudity, and free speech prepared the way for a final assault on the movie code. You want entertainment, wholesome, interesting, and vital? This, the motion picture industry, is pledged to provide. All these factors contributed to the end of this golden era. But none was more important or more tragic than the underlying reality that the church had quit being the church and the salt had lost its savor. By the middle of the century, many professing Christians had little zeal for either the Lord 
or the real needs of the culture around them. They became spiritually lazy, succumbing on the one hand to dry pharisaical attitudes that insisted upon a sanitized world where married couples slept in separate beds and everyone lived happily ever after. Or, and here's where the majority fell, throwing off God's commandments altogether and embracing the licentious and rebellious spirit that has come to characterize the second half of this century. As a result, the Christian film offices were closed, the code was abandoned, and a new era began. And what an era it has become. You need to appeal to an audience's basic motive for going to a movie. To be entertained. No, to be titillated. To go to the movies to be titillated, to see sex. One film historian gleefully described the mood of the culture as the movie code was dying and the sexual revolution was coming to life. When the Hayes Code was finally abolished in 1966, the timing couldn't have been better. The radical youth movement, with its emphasis on free love, was at its peak, as was wife swapping. Naturally, Hollywood studios were eager to capitalize on these hot sexual trends. The effect on the American public was intoxicating, and the long box office lines around the country encouraged Hollywood to keep going further until every taboo was shattered in the name of commerce. Shattered taboos they did. One by one, Hollywood broke and then tried to erase every word the Lord has ever spoken on the subject of sex. It just seems wrong. It's not. Look, it's just nice feelings. It's something that we've never done before. It's physical fun. It's, it's just sex. Oh, come on, it'll be fun. Where God expressly forbids sex before marriage, likening it to idolatry and stating in the strongest language possible that no fornicator has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. The edited version in Hollywood reads, thou shalt lose thy virginity at the earliest opportunity, preferably on prime time. Okay, okay, a man is a lot of things, but he's not a virgin. Are you a virgin? You've shown us the seven places you lost your virginity? It's easy for you to say. You already lost your virginity. 37 girls from my senior class lost their virginity this summer. Now that puts virgins in the minority. I'm not making it with him. I'm not making it with anyone. I never make it with anyone. I'm a human. You are for real? What was the last movie you saw that really encouraged you to abstain from sex prior to marriage? Oh, wow. <laughs> what was the last movie that you saw that really encouraged you to abstain from sex prior to marriage? Abstain from sex? Yeah. Sure, it wasn't. <laughs> I've never seen one. Never seen one. No. <laughs> this is the Vorthos Forum, and we approve this message.